share a little bit about what we did over spring break on our tour. We traveled nearly 2,000 miles. We visited nine churches, had 10 different concerts, went through the states of West Virginia, Tennessee, Alabama, Virginia, and Georgia. So a long trip, and we thank the Lord for his safety and protecting us, and also his blessing on our concerts as we were able to minister in these churches and Christian schools. At the outset, I just want to thank those that helped. So those in development and PR, you know, without them, this wouldn't have been possible. They do a lot of stuff behind the scenes, and we really appreciate that. I want to thank Mr. Robinson for driving our bus. That's a huge task, and he does so much more than drive the bus. He is a, a servant, by and large, just seeking to do anything he can do to help us, and we really appreciate his help. I want to thank also Ken and Bud and Mr. Rowe. They did a lot of work with the new bus, making shelves and helping us pack and we really appreciate all of that, that help. I wanna thank our students too. We um, had to cut some of our students this year because we had too many, 
and I appreciate those that willingly received that. It was hard to, to learn all this music and not to travel, so I appreciate their sweet spirit and their attitude. Some of them willingly gave that up. They said, we'll, we'll do that. Others had to be cut by me, which was not my favorite task, but I appreciate all of their attitudes um, and just their, their servant-like heart and being willing to do that. We want to share a little bit of our program quickly this morning in our chapel service. We don't have time to do everything. Our program title was Footsteps. Um, we just sought to magnify the Lord in the words of this first song. He's the one who's great in all his ways and worthy of our praise. So our program is entitled Footsteps. Um, you know, as believers, we reflect on the footsteps of life. Sometimes as we look at the present and even as we look to the future, it's hard to see God's hand in many of these circumstances, in many of the paths that we're on. Often as we look backwards, though, we see how God was with us and provided for us in those deep valleys, on those curvy roads, and even on the mountaintops. We see his hand um, controlling those circumstances and giving us the things that we need. So our program is just about that, you know, looking at how God is working through the pathway of our life and providing for us through all those things. The first section of our program um, focuses on walking in courage. We want you to ponder the truth that God knows what he's doing and we can trust him. Deuteronomy 31.6 says, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And then verse 8 in the same chapter says, The Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee. So two arresting thoughts in those verses. First of all, the fact that God is with us. Now, wherever that pathway leads us, we have the promise of God's presence with us at all times. And that does give us courage regardless of what we're facing. The second arresting thought in those verses is, is the fact that God says he's going to go before us. So God, who in some unexplainable way is already in the future, he's, he's outside of time. He knows what the future holds for us already. And that gives us courage. We don't need to fear the future because God's already there. And he's promised to give us the courage and the strength that we need. I trust in God, I trust in God, and he cares for me. On mountain bleak or on the sea, the stormy sea, those billows roll.
So one of the many blessings that comes through CrowdTour is being able to stay in host homes or ministry places. So this week we stayed in a few host homes and also three different camps. And when I first started Crow, like three, three, four years ago, that was very intimidating to me because I am not one to talking to strangers and being in people's homes, not sure, like, how can I start a conversation? But it ends up being one of my, one of my favorite parts of crowd tour because it's a good way to be able to get to know the other students in the choir that you may not have usually talked to before choir. And it's also a great way to get to know fellow believers that you've never met before. I've always enjoyed talking to them about the program and hearing how they, um, how they were ministered by the program. And it was especially encouraging to me this year because I got to hear about many people's life right after college and how God has led them through that intimidating beginning stage of life and even in their early marriage. And it was just so encouraging to know that even though we seem to be by ourselves in this spiritual bubble, that there are other believers in our family around, around us. in comfort. We want you to ponder the truth that God is always with us and we can keep going. So the path of a believer is not necessarily an easy path. In fact, it's probably going to be difficult. And there's a lot of reasons for that. You know, we live in a world that is a cursed world. There's viruses, sickness, death, accidents. Now, these are a part of the world in which we're living. There's also some suffering that's our own fault. You know, sometimes we make decisions that have consequences and we suffer because of that. But thirdly, there's also some suffering that comes to us as believers because we follow Christ. So our theme verse for our program is 1 Peter 2.21, which says, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. That's a hard verse, a hard truth to swallow. You know, the fact that we have been called, you know, it's not just God's desire, it's, it's his will. He's called us to follow in the footsteps of Christ, which is often going to lead to suffering. If you look at 1 Peter, that's the context. You know, Jesus didn't do anything wrong. He lived a perfect life, and yet he suffered because of that, ultimately going to the cross, which was God's will. But we, too, are called to follow in the footsteps of Christ. And we're going to lead sometimes difficult lives because of that. Because of that, we do need comfort. And uh, the next set of songs are all about Christ and how he's gone before us and can offer us comfort as we walk the journey of life. Jesus, what a friend for 
favorite parts of our program was hearing testimonies of our students. Um, not all of them, but most of them got the opportunity to share how they were saved or how the Lord is bringing them through the pathway of life and beautiful testimonies. I wish they could all share them, but we had to narrow it down. So a couple of them are going to share some testimonies, and I think it was their goal every night to make me cry before we had the next song. But a lot of these um, just very meaningful how the Lord has worked in their lives. I was one of the ones who got to share how I was saved, so I'll do that here now. So hello, good morning. Um, I was born and raised in a Christian family, as I'm sure most of us here are, but I was not saved before I turned 10, <laughs> which seems to be something that's different. I did pray a prayer when I was five. It was VBS in the summer, and somehow the idea of hell worked its way into my little five-year-old brain and thought, I don't want to go there. <laughs> um, and praying a prayer was the way to get out of it. Some person, I don't know who, but must have said, ask Jesus into your heart and you will be saved instead of repent and believe and you will be saved. And I asked Jesus into my heart and didn't repent and didn't believe. But I thought I was good. Um, I carried on living and I did everything right. I went to church every time the doors opened, went to Christian school. Not that it was my choice, but I still went. Um, every time the doors were open, I lived two minutes from church and practically lived there. Um, once I learned how to play guitar, I played guitar on Sunday mornings and was always involved in singing and music and all these things and kept going as a Christian. Um, I was, some of you may know the wilds of New England, but I went there a couple years ago for summer and the preacher was preaching, as he does, and somehow he was preaching on martyrs and the image came into my head of the martyrs when they died 
seeing Christ. And seeing him face to face finally after all that suffering and all that pain and all that labor and just being rewarded with that joy. And I knew that wasn't mine. I, I couldn't bow at his feet. I could hardly manage to turn my back in shame. And shame as a position is not a Christian. Um, and that, the spirit just worked into my head that I'm not good as I thought I was and bad. And you know, at the end, of, it was the end of the week, and they had a, a bow the knee time where we turn around in our seats and put our knees on the floor and our elbows on the chair and just kind of bow our heads for a few minutes while the piano plays. And the piano was playing a hymn. I don't remember what it was. I think it was Alas and Did My Savior Bleed, but it was something about the blood of Christ. And just again, the Spirit was, was ministering to me um, and really impressed on me that I am bad, God is good, and he's forgiving. And that goodness and forgiveness came together in the blood of Christ. I don't know how, but it's, it's mine. I knew it was. It was for me. And I, I believed it. I thought that would be confusing. Um, so my testimony is how God has helped me uh, through certain difficulties in my life. I don't know if this is close enough to my mouth, but hopefully it is. Um, so I come from a bit of a dis dysfunctional home. Um, most of you probably don't know that. Um, but um, my parents were saved in their late 30s, and so that resulted in them trying to figure out how to raise my siblings and I uh, in a way that was the way that the Bible taught, a God-honoring way while at the same time having that background of being raised in an unsaved family, both of them. And, uh, and because of that, that led to a lot of confusion for me um, as I began to see the difference between what I saw at home, what I saw at church, and when, you know, just in public in general. And then we'd come home and they'd be completely different people. Uh, and then that confusion kind of just got to me and eventually led to bitterness towards my parents and eventually towards hate, uh, towards God, towards my parents, and then even towards my own life because I didn't want to live what it felt like just this confusing, like, you know, I know how Christians are supposed to live because my parents taught me how Christians are supposed to live, and yet they don't live like that. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, if the people who taught me how to be, how to act as a Christian can't do it, like, how is it even worth me trying? Um, so eventually I decided my life wasn't worth it, but thankfully God saved me out of that. Um, he didn't allow me to take my life. Um, and so uh, what amazes me more than anything is being here, singing and, uh, and during chorale tour, just being able to do that, being with all these people, um, and just that God was faithful even as I was unfaithful to him as I spent in his face and, and spent in what he gave me, like the, the life that he gave me I didn't value, and yet somehow he said, I still want to use you. I still want you to, to, to be used in ministry, and so I'm just thankful to be here, to be, <laughs> I'm just willing to be used, but I'm, I'm thankful that God didn't uh, spurned me away when I spurned him. So.
right, so this is uh, my third corral tour. Um, I've done it sophomore, junior, and senior year, and every year I love it. Uh, I have so much fun, and I love getting to know um, the people on tour um, uh, as far as the corral team itself, um, people that maybe I'm not used to talking to um, a whole lot, and then also the churches, the host homes, everything like that. Um, but one thing that was an encouragement to me um, this tour was just um, seeing the excitement that the churches had and the pastors had to see us, um, to see young people who are interested in being in ministry and who are interested in serving the Lord with their lives. Um, a lot of these churches, you know, either they don't have a lot of young people or um, the young people are just kind of doing their own thing and don't really want to serve Jesus. And so it was kind of an encouragement to me, just the, the immense privilege that I have to be able to study at Bible college and to have people pouring into my lives um, to be able to study God's word on a daily basis um, in depth and just what a blessing that is and just how much I want to serve God. Our final set of songs are about walking in confidence. We want you to ponder the truth that God strengthens us and we can be joyful. Unfortunately, we tend to be duty driven as believers, and I'm guilty of that just as much as anyone. You know, we tend to just do things not allowing our emotions or our heart to be affected. And that can be good, right? I mean, who felt like getting up this morning? You know, we did it out of duty. We had to get up. We had to go to class. However, I think God in his word has given us, um, as one of the fruits of the Spirit, joy. And the old-time preachers used to say that the truth needs to move 12 inches from your head to your heart. And that's what they were talking about. You know, it has to affect our emotions. And as we ponder the path of life and as we look forward to the future, we should be doing that with a degree of joy and confidence. Psalm 1611 says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So we know that's talking about heaven. You know, you're not going to have fullness of joy until you get to heaven in God's presence. But there is a degree of joy that we can have in this life. And God has promised to, to give us courage, and we can walk with joy. These final songs are songs of confidence and joy. I hope you recognize some of them. And if you feel like singing with us, you can. But these are our great expressions of the courage that God gives us and the joy that we can have on the path of life. Tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for.
it's on. I can speak. Hello, everyone. Um, I was just asked to share uh, just some interesting, um, fun activities that happened around. Is that close enough? Around the Corral tour. Uh, one of the amazing things was to be able to speak to the people in the churches, uh, just be able to interact, mingle, uh, talk to them, it was just really encouraging to the faith. Uh, just two people personally that I was able to meet, one at uh, the Church of the Zimmerman. I don't remember the name of the church, but I know it was their church. Uh, but I was able to just talk to someone that was had able to live in France uh, around the same time that I was born. So in the same town I was, yeah, just... It was really cool that to be able to speak French at the same time and just talk to people that had uh, been where I'd been, know, had known my pastor and all that stuff. So it was just really cool to be able to talk to people in churches and find, you know, cool uh, relationships that you had maybe known in the past. And just as, as you just realize it's a small world and we are here to encourage others and do things for others and not for ourselves. So. Good morning, everybody. Hey, Mom. And she's watching. Um, <laughs> um, so this is my uh, second year of, of Corral Tour. And my only regret is that I didn't do it on my, on my, uh, during my freshman year. Because back, back then I was still trying to figure out, like, where, where did I fit in here? Um, something very neat about Tour was especially, and this is going to sound like, duh, but it's, well, I mean, it was, it was especially the songs that we were able to sing. And a couple of them, the one that we sang recently, um, All Things New, and another one called Unclouded Day, uh, for me, in my own life, took on a new level of, took on a new dimension of meaning. Um, it, was <coughs> it was on the morning of March the 3rd that I received a phone call, I was expecting it, that my grandpa had passed away. Um, and and uh, for just the hope that we have as believers, he was a believer, of being able to see our loved ones again. And really for this tour, for me, I, I experienced God's grace in a way that I'm not sure I've experienced before. Like, it was the day prior when I had been told that he was failing that my mom uh, told me it was her dad that passed away. Um, she told me, um, please, Michael, I want you to enjoy your tour. Like, yes, please pray for us, but um, please don't dwell on it. Don't, uh, don't have your head so stuck so stuck back back here just we want you to enjoy yourself and be able to minister to others and that I can testify is exactly what happened I um, I did think about it yes cried a little bit but it was um, it wasn't a time where I was constantly thinking about it um, and, and and I guess moving on from that one, another thing I really loved about tour was getting to meet uh, uh, new people again. Um, we'll also reunite with some familiar faces at the Zimmerman's church. Um, but uh, and just that familial aspect that you feel with other people that you haven't even met before and probably might not see again, just, you know, that, that song we sing often in chapel, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I mean, that's a real message. Um, and it just makes me think, I mean, going beyond my own family, just how sweet the reunion in heaven will be. Oh, when shall I see Jesus and reign with him above? And shall hear the trumpet sound in that morning. And from the flowing fountain drink everlasting love. And shall hear the trumpet sound in that morning. Oh, shout with glory, I shall mount above the skies. When I hear the trumpet sound in that morning. Oh, shout with glory. I shall mount above the skies when I hear the trumpet sound in that trumpet. But now I am a soldier, my captain's gone before, and I hear the trumpet sound in that morning. He's given me my orders and he bids me there give or till I hear the trumpet sound in that morning. Oh, shout! With glory I shall mount above the skies 
When I hear the trumpet sound in that morn, in that morn, oh, shout with glory, I shall mount above the skies. When I hear the trumpet sound in that morn, in that morn, in that morn, in that morn, when shall I be delivered from this vain world of sin? And shall hear the trumpet sound in that morn, in that morn. And with my blessed Jesus drink endless pleasures in. And shall hear the trumpet sound in that morn, in that morn. Oh, shout with glory, I shall mount above the skies. When I hear the trumpet sound in that morning. Oh, shout with glory, I shall mount above the skies. When I hear the trumpet sound, sound in that morn, 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 in that morning. So this is my sixth chorale tour, I think. Don't ask any questions. <laughs> but um, I was asked to share the first night about how God helped me through difficulty. And one of the um, highlights, well, not highlights, but one of the biggest ways that God helped me through difficulty in my life was when my girlfriend, she had gone through a lot of health issues, had to leave school, um, and wasn't able to graduate with me in the, in the program that I'm in, but she's going to be getting her associates. And through that whole situation, um, a lot of different details, a lot of different things that I could talk about, but one thing that I can know for sure is that God was faithful. And one of the verses that immediately came to mind was Lamentations 3, where Lamentations, I don't know if you guys know what Lamentations mean, but that's not about joy. <laughs> and in Lamentations 3, he's talking about how even though we have all of these things happening in our life, all these turmoils, difficulties, trials. Um, God is still faithful to us, and his mercy is new every morning, and great is his faithfulness. And that's my proclamation to you today is how great God was in my weakness. And another verse that came to mind was in Paul's life when he was talking about this thorn in the flesh that he had and how he asked God three times. He's like, take this away from me, take this away from me, take this away from me. And God reminds him and says, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And that was another reminder to me that no, I, I try to be strong on my own. And I can only do so much on my own. I can do, it's not a whole lot. <laughs> but God can work through that weakness that I have and remind me that it's not my strength I should be relying on, but his strength through my weakness. So I would also like to share how the Lord led me through difficult times. Um, I was born and raised in a good Christian home, and I had, I was always brought up in ministry, and I kind of got in the, the sense of pride that, all right, I'm a good person, and my family is a great people. We, we go to church. We're very faithful. We serve others. We serve God. Um, I was like, and because of this pride, I kind of thought that, okay, nothing bad is going to happen. We're going to walk through life just perfectly fine because, like, nothing bad happens to good people. Uh, in the year 2022, my dad was found with cancer, and this was a shock to me. I was surprised that something like this could happen to my family. Um, you know, you always hear about other people going through trials, and you hear other people going through cancer, and you kind of, like, you, you don't really think of it happening to you. And I was very bitter. I was very upset. And I just, I, I couldn't understand how God could let this happen. How could he let it happen to my dad? How could he let it happen to me? Um, but my dad brought me out of this. He told me that, hey, God doesn't do anything for evil. He only does things for good. And this helped me understand that, okay, things will be okay. <laughs> um, the Lord is with me. He does guide my footsteps. And I am going to be uh, okay. And everything will be okay. Um, good news, my dad is fine. <laughs> He's cancer-free now. Um, but it was a hard year for me, and I'm grateful for my dad for helping me and for God as well for helping me get through it. Faith in His excellent word, His excellent word. 
nation is Jesus.